What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 16 of the Go language tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is templating with Go's HTML slash templating package. So what I've got up here right now is just your typical Hello World Go web app example. And what I'd like to do is show you how you can incorporate templates. So first of all, you know, all the things that we've shown up to this point, even in this tutorial, what we're going to show with templates is just going to be super basic and you could do it all without templates. The problem is when your code begins to get a little more complex and you start to incorporate things like JavaScript or even just, even just when you start doing, um, more complicated HTML systems and styling and all that, um, I think it will be kind of problematic to keep using Go in line with your code. Now, some people might actually prefer that way, and that's totally fine. I mean, if you're coming from something like PHP, <laughs> that might feel really natural to you, and by all means, go for it. Uh, but for me, I think it's better, I would rather use templates, but if you don't want to use templates after this, that's probably fine. Um, you could get away with using that kind of tilde multi-line stuff uh, and probably be okay. But anyways, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make use of the templates. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So um, if you don't have this code, just go to this tutorial. There's a link in the description, at least that leads to this Go series, and then you can just go to part 16 and grab the starting code if you want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a new page. So we're just gonna have http.handlefunk and then this is gonna lead to slash agg for ag because it'll be our news aggregator. And I'm gonna have, um, basically we're just gonna make a uh, news ag handler, which probably, there you go, handler. And the news ag handler, basically, this is going to take your templates and, and, or at least this is going to be our page, right? Which is going to use a template. And when you use a template, you're going to execute a template. And when you execute that template, you can pass the writer and then you pass the variable, the single variable. So if you're not noticing a trend here in Go, you rarely get to pass multiple variables or values. If you want to do that, you need a struct. So, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. The lifeblood of Go, the struct. So uh, let's go ahead and just do type, and then we'll call this news ag page. And that will be a struct. And for now, we're just going to have two values. We're going to have the title, and that'll be a string. And then we're going to have uh, news, and that'll be a string. Um, also, before I forget, let's go ahead and make our import. So we're going to bring in uh, HTML slash template so that we can do the templating. So now let's go ahead and make our, uh, our news ag handler. So let me just, uh, and in fact, actually, I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to write it all out. And then I'm going to copy and paste news ag handler. Nice. So. Um, now what we want to do is just work on the code that we're going to need here. So first of all, we're going to use P to be our page. So I'm just going to say P colon equals, and that's going to be the news ag page. And then in here, we're going to just going to hard code some values. So we're going to say title, and then the title can be literally anything. I'm going to call this the amazing news aggregator. And, and then uh, the news itself. Um, again, we're just going to have, um, you know, some news for now. <laughs> so that's going to be our page and all its values. Now what we want to do is create the actual template itself. So we're going to say template and then any error, if it was passed, we're not going to worry about errors right now. Eventually we'll talk about errors and all that and the panic and recover all that stuff. But for now, we're not going to do anything with it. So we need to undercase it cause we're not going to use it. So, um, so yeah, so basically our template will be, uh, template from what we imported above HTML slash template and then parse files parse files and the file we want to parse to be our template is going to be basic templating.html so um, we're going to be making our template in there it's going to be it's going to be amazing HTML code so now that we've done that finally the last thing that we want to do is we need to actually execute this page so um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say T for our template that we just did execute. And then what we're going to execute is with our writer. And then what we're going to say is, is we're going to pass any values. So we're passing P, which is that news aggregator page with these values here. So we can reference actually these values. 
So uh, with that, um, we're, we're basically done. We just need to actually write the basic templating.html page. So I've already got one created, or at least I created the file, but we're gonna need to populate it. So um, if you don't have this already, go ahead and make one real quick, open it up, and you're ready to go. So we're gonna make first the, um, basically the title. So we're gonna put that in header one tags, nice big uh, tags. And then to specify any sort of uh, structures, values, whatever, inside, or basically inside your templates, um, but go structures, um, sort of, you, you need the double curly braces, okay? And so what we're gonna do inside these double curly braces is specify, we want to we want just the title. So we're gonna use a dot to, to note, basically this is a variable here. And we're just gonna say title, title. And if title had uh, values, you could do title dot, I don't know, like if it was titles, like a list of titles, like we might have, it could be titles dot title or something like that. It'd probably be title like this. Anyway, um, but we just want titles, that's it. So we just use that first dot. Um, and then what we're going to do is um, after our titles, we would have, I don't know, some news. So we'll have some paragraph tags. And then again, uh, here we would just do dot uh, news and we can save that. So once we have that, we are ready to actually run this application. So I'm going to go ahead and just go run, go tut. So go run, go tut, see if we have any errors. We do. Uh, we use probably a single quote at some point in line 16. I'm not seeing it. Let's see, 16 here. Okay, yep. I was looking at the wrong line. So someone asked, and I think it's a great question, why can't we use single quotes in Go? Have I just not, I, maybe I've not reached the uh, point where a single quote is actually like a really meaningful thing in Go. Uh, but if someone has that answer, uh, feel free to let us know because I still haven't come across any reason why I can't use single quote. Uh, t.execute, what did I do wrong there? Did we use a underscore? We did, so um, that would never work, right? It needs to be uh, exported, so capital that, capitalize that E. Let's try again, third time's a charm. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'll allow it, let's do it. Wait for it, okay. So what we can do now is we can come to our homepage. I'm just gonna do slash ag. And interestingly, I am empty handed. What did we do wrong? Basic templating.html. For some reason, I don't have anything in ag. Title, news. Oh, okay. So, our, so man, typos galore. Anyway. I simply wanted to show an example with titles and then I screwed myself. And I think news stayed news. So here we can actually just modify the HTML template. We don't have to re restart anything. Hopefully that fixes it. Sure enough, it does. Okay, so um, so yeah, if, you, if you're missing that variable, it won't error out on you. It just, I, I mean, it errors somewhere. It's just very secretive to you. And that's why you need to eventually have probably the cover of the panics and all that because errors in Go are only occur really if you ask them to occur. Otherwise they're kind of hidden and, and they don't really bug you, um, which can be kind of problematic when you hit issues like this. So I'm guessing uh, if we had uh, not done this, like I'm just curious at this point, I've actually not tested this. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw air there. Um, and then format dot print line error. It'll probably be nil. I, I'm not even sure if it prints out nil. You can also just say if error not equals nil, something like that. Uh, print that out. Let me go ahead and save that real quick. I'm just curious at this point, this tutorial is over. You're probably not gonna learn anything new besides answering this question. Um, I'll allow it, but I'm just curious, so. Okay, so it does at least print nil. And then if we go and change this to be like titles, save that, um, just for the record. I mean, you should be seeing this on your screen too, but yeah, let me just refresh it again. Oh, so no, that's not giving us the error. Hmm, I wonder where the error would happen if it would be maybe at this stage. No, it wouldn't happen at this stage. You would think it would happen right here at this stage. Maybe t.execute returns an error if it has it. I'm just curious. Like I said, tutorial's over. If you want to leave, feel free. Template, what was that? HTML, 
template going. And then I'll just search execute. Of course we could, oh yeah, so t.execute does return an error. Um, that was quick. So one thing we could do, <laughs> format.print line. So rather than this error, and I'll just comment out that error. Let's see if we get an error this time. <sighs> Don't you just love Go? <laughs> I wish you could declare stuff and not use it. Uh, that drives me nuts. Because I'm just trying to debug. that I keep running into it because of that. I mean, I'm definitely notorious for, for declaring stuff and not using it. But that's annoying. So nil nil let's go ahead and cause an error see if this one will do it for us oh reload the page there we go nice so yeah so there's how you could could have acquired the error uh but we were letting it pass silently because it's go and that's what that's what errors do in go you have to you have to specifically ask for them to uh rear their heads anyway Kind of interesting. And that's why most Go programs, they don't look like this. A lot of times they'll say, like, if error equals nil. Or if error, yeah, either equals nil or if error does not equal nil, what are we going to do? Let's actually print it out and all that. Not if error equals nil. Anyways. Whew. Okay, cool. A um, little bonus for anybody who's happened to stick around. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is applying these templates to our web app and actually doing something that involves a little more HTML because obviously this was something we could have very easily, maybe even easier, more easily done. I don't know. Anyway, could have been easier, maybe even just doing it in line with Go. So anyways, let's go ahead and actually apply this to something a little more complicated, but not too complicated uh, with our news aggregator web app. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.